and fluffy this is back good afternoon youtube how are we today now it seems very ironic that i've chosen one of the hottest days of the year so far to come out and film my winter wild camping kit but here i am so i'm gonna get on with it now reason for this video number one I just want to show everybody what I kind of use in my winter wild camping sleep system. This is for a hammock camp, so it was generally what I'd take in colder conditions here in the UK for hammock camping. Now I got asked by one subscriber how I managed to get everything into the DD Bergen. <laughs> and my answer to that is with difficulty mate, to be honest, I think your name was Jack. So this is what I do Jack, I have got quite a lot of lightweight gear so if you use the standard DD stuff you're going to struggle to get everything in that Bergen I will admit. Over the years I've managed to get my pack size and my weight right down so I can fit everything for one nighter, a stretch too, it's just the food and stuff is an issue, into the DD Bergen. Now. I believe the main compartment for this is 37 litres and then there's 10 litres worth of pouches on the side and this action pack which I want to say is like 7 litres or something but I, if I'm wrong <laughs> I'll do my trick put it there or there that one I'm going it's um it's a squeeze to be honest with you mate but I can get everything I need in there for one night possibly two um, in my previous video where I did a, a load out of my bag, again, link up here somewhere, I did say that every trip varies, so this is just like the bog standard stuff, what I'd need for sort of a camping, bushcrafty type overnighter in the winter. Without further ado, I shall go through the bag with you and uh, explain everything as I go. Okay, so the very top section, this is the same on all the bags that I use, so the lid of the bag itself of some sort of water protection and first aid kit. So as we can see here, sand in it for some reason. I don't know why there's sand in it. First aid kit, toilet tissue, obviously. And in here, for my bushcraft type trips, I just have the poncho light, super light poncho from DD. So I can chuck that over my head, over the bag, and that keeps me dry. I may just add, while I'm on the subject, if I'm taking a different sort of sleep system, I can sometimes attach that to the mole systems, the molly systems, the straps on the bag itself. So this isn't a review of this bag, but I'm just saying that you have options to add dry bags to the outside of this, which I have done. I'll probably put a clip of me walking around somewhere. That is the top section of the bag. Also, as I usually use axes and stuff, on bushcrafty trips, uh, Israeli bandage. Hopefully never have to use that. But now I've just realized that it wasn't sand that exploded in there, it was a bag of coffee. So that's the top section. Oh no, compass and whistle as well in the top section. Also I keep a map in there if I needed one for the trip. Stay on the outside for the time being. So in one of the side pouches, this time I have a hammock, so this is what I'm sleeping in, super light hammock from DD. There's no bug net in that, but I find you don't need it so much in the winter. And then also in that side pocket is my cup and gas cook set, link above for a review on that. Now in the other side pouch here I have water for the trip so I think this is 900 odd mil it's just just sort of a litre anyway in fact I can have some now also in this side pocket bushcraft knife silky saw um, these glow in the dark stakes that are ideal for if the ground's softer and uh, yeah you need to peg out in soft ground or mossy ground also there's a bit of fatwood in there which doesn't usually live in there but it is today for some reason so that's the side two pouches also on the front here where my camera bag is strapped to today there's a little loop so i can fit the handle of my axe down into that and then have the axe head there the axe head actually hides under the hood of the bag 
so that you don't look like a crazy axeman walking through the woods. So yeah, anyway, front pocket. So nothing in the sides. In the front, I have my hospitals bag. So I've got fire kit, um, battery charger, head torch. Again, if you want to see what's in this, that I'll link to the other loadout video to see in more details, weights and everything. So yeah, that is the outside completely done. Now, for the inside. If I open the lid, first thing I come to is my tarp and ridge line, and I think I've got like eight super light pegs in there. But they are very thin, the super light pegs, so that's why I've got those uh, bigger stakes in there, just in case I can't get into the ground properly. Next, for hammock camping, I'd say 10 months of the year, I would always recommend an under blanket. Even the warmest nights, you still get a wind and that catches the back of your, your hammock and you feel it, even in the summer. Daylight today, the nights get down to about 14, 15, you should be all right. But anything lower than that, the wind chill on your back is noticeable. So it's not much of a compromise. It's not that, it compresses down pretty small. I'd always recommend an under blanket. Now is my sleep system, which is all in there. I have, I'll get it all out, it's easier. So it's a, uh, I think the litre, what size is this? I think this is a 15 or 20 litre dry bag from OEX, just from Go Outdoors. So whenever I'm going on a camping trip, I'll put everything in there, all my sleep system and spare clothes goes in here, just in case I do have any accidents. So, out kit, sky high, three straight four season bag. Again, link for this review. Brilliant sleeping bag. Never had a problem with it, never been cold in it, and I've been down to minus three or four in it. Next in the bag, down jacket, compresses down to nothing. Woolly hat, just for sleeping in. Big thick pair of socks, obviously, for sleeping in as well. And then some long johns, so tops, bottoms, so generally, I tend to take my clothes off I've been wearing during the day and just wear long johns in bed. And then if you're still cold in the morning, just keep them on under your clothes. Jobs are good. And, and the Trekology pillow. I find sometimes you don't even need a pillow in the hammock. Could use even that. I've even blown some air up inside this. And just do it up a bit. You can have a look. little bit of a pillow there, look. Anyway. Not what this video is about is it last of all at the bottom i have my cooking stuff so this isn't always i don't always take this bush box in case i need a small contained fire and then the little oex frying pan foldable handles and just a little plastic plate cheapy little plate and that is it now, I always carry on my person Open Else number six. That's for any food prep or eating that I do. Obviously the bushcraft knife is for bigger jobs and I light my fire ferrocerium rod. Brilliant bit of kit this is. I've had this for a good couple of years now. It's not let me down, so can't recommend that enough. That is it, and like I say at the beginning, I've had this bag for, I'd say four years now, and it is a decent bag. I mean, I've never had any problems with it. I'm not too keen on the Velcro strapping, because it can come a bit loose, especially when you've got a lot of weight in there. But yeah, apart from that, it's done me, done me proud, really. I managed to get everything in there I need. If I was gonna go on a two day, maybe three day hike. I have taken this, but I've actually had to carry another bag with me in as well, which isn't ideal. So I think the Caramel Sabres are probably, I think it's Sabre, Caramel Sabres, are probably more suited to a couple of nights bushcrafty camp, but just shows that you can take winter gear in a smaller bag if you've got the stuff. So now I've got to put it all back. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with right at the bottom, those two, that gives you a little bit of room in the bottom opens it up a bit so you can get a few more bits in there so next just 
have the OEX bag and literally just stuff everything in there and compress it down. next in top so yeah then the under blanket try and squeeze it down a bit more toggle it up so that's the inside main compartment so obviously apart from my possibles in there I could fit a fair bit of food in that section and then the two side sections and that front section as well right do that one back up so side pouches water with the stakes in there as well. Saw, knife, other side, cook kit, and the hammock. And very tight pouch, some exploded uh, coffee that I'll take home. Israeli bandage, modified first aid kit, tissues, and poncho. So I've even rushed putting that away because I've got things to do, but still, it's all in there. I hope that helps some people out. One, to show that you can get some winter gear into the DD Bergen, even though it's not the biggest bag, um, it is still possible. And two, uh, just to give you a little insight of what I use for the winter gear. Next week, I'm planning, I think we're gonna get some thunderstorms next week, because it's been so nice and warm this week, so I'm planning to come up to this woods and do a little wild camp. I've got the new Lansham One Pro, so I've seam sealed it. I just wanna give it a bit of a weather test before I go anywhere too far afield with it. So I'm thinking I might come and do a stealthy one up here after work one night next week if we're going to get those thunderstorms. Anyway guys, thank you as always for watching. Thanks for all the new subs. Welcome to the channel if you are new. If you're new, please do give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button, the bell notification, and you'll be notified every time I upload. Until next time guys, stay safe. Peace. And by the way, I did weigh this roughly at home yesterday before I brought it out and the bag without food and everything was about 11 or 12 kilograms. I had to do it on my bathroom scales because I haven't got any of the, the hanging things. So anyway, just thought I'd add that in. Bye.